MAT for the hamstrings, post isometric relaxation or PIR. First of all, let's look at the hamstring group. When we say the hamstrings, we refer to three muscles. The biceps femoris, which has two heads, semimembranosus and semitendinosus. We've got the biceps femoris, which lies laterally. And then the semimembranosus and semitendinosus are on the medial aspect of the posterior leg. In terms of anatomy and physiology, they cross the hip and the knee joint. So they originate on the pelvis at the tuberosity of ischium or the ischial tuberosity, coming down the linea aspera of the femur, and then the semimem and semiten on the medial side, so we have medial condyle of tibia and the pes anserinus tendon at the tibia, with the biceps femoris on the lateral side inserting into the head of the fibula. They've got multiple actions. At the hip, they work to extend the hip, but they're also involved in flexing the knee. Lateral rotation in the knee, that's the biceps femoris, but this action only occurs when the knee is flexed. So let's look at how we stretch the hamstrings. If they extend the hip, then flexing the hip will provide a stretch to the hamstrings. And also extension in the knee. In particular, when the hip is flexed, we will target the insertion of the hamstrings. So for the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to apply an MET to the whole of the hamstring group. So we're going to work across the hip by bringing it into flexion. When we're doing our range of motion test, normal range of motion for the hip is approximately 125 degrees. But again, look at both legs to see what normal is for your client. The knee is going to be straight or extended. So let's take a look at how we would apply PIR MET to the hamstrings. Okay, so we're just going to start with an active range of motion, please. So could you just do a straight leg raise for me, please? Thank you. And let it back down. Lovely. Now I'm just going to do a passive range of motion test. So just relax the leg and let me do the movement. So I'm going to find that first barrier. And now, using about 10% of your power, or just meet my resistance, press down into my hand. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, big deep breath in, out, and relax, lovely. And I'm just waiting for that leg to go heavy, for me to feel that the client has let it go. And then you've got about a 10 second window to slowly and smoothly move to that next point of resistance, which is around here. So I'm going to take the leg onto my shoulder, better for me. Now, I'm going to hold it here for 10 seconds. And when you're ready, just press down into my shoulder. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, big deep breath in, out, and just let the leg go. So she's relaxing instantly now. Still I have that window of time to move, making sure that you're moving nice, slowly and controlled to that next barrier point and holding for 10 more seconds. I feel like there's one more in this. So once I've held for 10 seconds, we're going to go again. When you're ready, press down, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, two big deep breath and relax, lovely. And then once you feel that leg go heavy, move to that next point and simply hold for maybe 20 seconds at the end. Feel this is the last one. And then slowly and control place the leg down. Now when you're ready, straight leg raise for me, so an active range of motion test and we're looking for any improvement in range. Our client was pretty good to start with. And then I'm going to do a passive recheck. And passively is actually better and much smoother in terms of movement. 
When we're doing the hamstrings like this, another thing to look for on that active range of motion is any rotation on the leg, because that's giving you a clue as to whether it's the medial or lateral hamstrings that might be involved. So for example, if my client's leg was rotating out as she was lifting, well then I would be rotating that leg inwards to try and target the tight muscles better. On the other side, if I felt her leg was coming inwards on that raise, then I might want to rotate it back to a more neutral position to try and target exactly where her hamstrings are tighter. So the active range of motion test is for two things. One, to see any cheat patterns and to see what their actual active range is, but to also give us clues in those bigger muscle groups as to what subset of muscles might be tight.